welcome back to my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe so I can continue doing these videos. Thank you. You can find me on all social media by Paranormal Geek. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm here with Alicia Leon, a cosmic divine spiritual advisor from Instagram. She is a medium white bruja, Metatron, Akashic Records you work with, and you specialize in tyrant, tyrant card reading and karmic connections in Las Vegas. That's your website. Yes, I um, made this um, Instagram about a few years ago. Uh, it's Cosmic Divine. I consider myself a spiritual advisor instead of like a psychic medium, but it's still connected in the same way. I do mediumship channeling, tarot readings, spiritual readings. Um, I've invited Olympias and cleansings, and uh, I've met Metatron, the Archangel along the way, who's helped me connect and clearing, and then um, in a sense, connecting to Akashic Records. That's cool. That's really cool. So we're going to start off with some questions. Okay. And our first question is, the scariest paranormal experience that you ever had? Oh, I have so many. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, um, as a child, I my first experience with paranormal, um, I would, in a sense, um, hear talking. You know, I feel like, in a sense, we think we're crazy. And as a child, you don't understand these things. I was drawn to um, buy a Ouija board at eight years old at Fedco and I bought it with my own money um, from chores and uh, I played with it and you know followed the you know plank it with it and just played with it and I feel like my uh, my dad and my aunts were like scared of it <laughs> they made me get rid of it and I never understood it because no one explained that to me they were just like it's bad you know don't play with that okay. and so I was never given the um, reasons you know um, I've, I've also, in a sense, had some experiences just with, you know, where I've worked and who, you know, relations, you know, um, I've had, uh, experiences working at LA County hospital, which oh. I would come across energies, life and death all the time. But at that time I wasn't, uh, in tuned or did I know how to, uh, cleanse or, uh, you know, uh, protect. I wasn't really informed, but I was just collecting all this energy. So that was a very scary experience when you have the afterlife connecting to you, you hear noises, you know, things moving. Uh, the LA County Hospital is a very old hospital. I believe it was born in the, you know, I think it was built in the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. Oh, yeah. So you could just imagine how many people have <laughs> passed and came through there and, um, you know, I used either. to, oh you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I've seen people die in front of me too. Like their spirits actually leave their body right in front of me. And that was an experience too, to see someone's soul just kind of emerge out of their body, you know, and see the life just suck out of them. You know, um, I used to, uh, you know, walk around, I was a security guard there. So of course we had access to the whole hospital. And there was places you just didn't want to go because you felt that energy. It was just like, uh, you know, and scary. Nobody wanted to walk by themselves. You know, we'd always want someone to walk with us. But there was times I had to walk by myself. Oh. And that's when you felt those things like come towards you. And um, I'm that's, sorry. No, that just reminds me of because my last job, actually, it was. Oh, really? So you have some, some, <laughs> some uh, similar experiences. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, you're bringing me back memory. <laughs> yes. Well, I feel like it was used as a plateau for me to learn from, you know, uh, no, you know, never planned to work at the county hospital, it just aligned with my path. And there was a reason for it. I felt it was to have experiences with the afterlife and spirit. And even, you know, I'm going to say it, there was demonic energy there, too. Um, I feel like, you know, I was a channel, didn't understand my my uh gift you know as we're all born intuitive but i didn't understand my gifts so i was really confused and scared and you know i wasn't uh given a book that said hey this is how you follow the afterlife and if you're a medium or you don't get those those no. uh books in life oh and this is part of why i think i got drawn to start this part of the series in my channel is that normal yes because me as a kid i mean it's on my channel. I'll link it somewhere. I we went through some 
traumatic paranormal experiences and might be meant just meant like um mentally but from that you can it could be drawn to paranormal so it was like a, a it was a crazy experience with that and i it sucked that at that time in the 90s i don't think they had a place that you could just go and look this is happening can we get right help? it was harder than yeah. than than now nowadays <laughs> it's an easy access you have access to learning these things through youtube and google and men you know people you can meet it's very accessible now back in the days no, no. <laughs> Is not at all <laughs> scary <laughs> um, i mean i've had attachments myself you know and they were scary and um i didn't know how to release them so i really you know i was born catholic and then you know i you know experienced christianity so i thought christianity was the right thing to do you know to release anything demonic you know or you know protection mm -hmm. but i still felt like at a cross there <laughs> you know i still felt like that wasn't the the savior of everything, you know, um, I've had attachments follow me home from the hospital, but I opened portals <laughs> and I didn't realize I was opening portals. You know, I didn't realize I was like, oh, if I just open this up, you know, nothing will, it was curiosity. It was my drawing to it. It was like saying, hey, open this up. And I did, but yeah, wasn't no. told to protect myself or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how to cleanse your aura or release attachments. I learned that way later way later yeah it, it's not easy because <laughs> it's like for me it's like a a fly or a bug drawn to the light like yes is that like <laughs> yeah we're light we're lights to the darkness and in a sense not all attachments or energies are bad we just yeah. think we're not understanding it so we look at it as evil yeah. that's and my you know i believe that we draw in good and bad especially hospital it's just the hospital grounds like more of like you could have both things because it's so especially yes. if it's that old there's so many things people have been through traumatic deaths good things yeah things it's like a candy market for <laughs> the spiritual paranormal right stuff. well you gotta remember we're born there and people die there so yeah. you're getting the both spectrums of you know energies and there's a middle world and when people don't realize they passed on they're lost you know and yep. so some people are confined to the you know this earthly element they don't know how to pass over or they're just confused or lost you know and uh you know i've seen people like i said i've i've seen people try to do suicide in front of me um i've seen people pass away in front of me i worked in the er so that was like you know, you seen death a lot and I just kind of got used to it. You know, I think, you know how you say nurses get numb to this stuff. Yeah, It's true. It's very true. I mean, they're so surrounded around it all the time. You just kind of grow a numbness to it with mm -hmm. death. Yep. But, um, <laughs> it's go ahead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. I'm just remembering my aunt, she, she is a nurse. So she, I would see her. That's why I got a little scared from becoming a nurse or a doctor and all that. I don't think I could take all that. And I ended up Oh no, it's a, it's a lot. In yeah. The gift shop of the hospital. Energy is it's a lot of energy, yes. And um we take that home, you know. Yeah. Uh I've had experience with seeing a nurse shadow that was in the front corridor of the hospital. Um she was one of those nurses back in the days they used to wear like the gowns, you know, and they had the yeah. white hat. Yeah. Uh, I we there was stories you heard about her like oh did you see the nurse and um, I actually one night was uh, I was uh, met, staying there I was that was my work area for the night and I remember hearing things mm -hmm. and walking around the hallways and I saw this like shadow but she looked like someone from like a different era you know and I was like what the hell and <laughs> so I followed it but I it was like very like she was very fast. But it was like a fake. I thought I was going crazy. And I was like, what the hell? You, you hear about him, but you actually see it with your your own eyes. And you're like, oh, shit. You know, yeah. excuse my language. <laughs> no, you're fine. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's And it's like, you can see him in different. I'm just going to say, I have seen him, but it's not every day. And the times that I've seen him, it's like, I'll never forget it. There's, there's so many ways they appear that's either like um, translucent or smoke smoky which is so weird mm -hmm. to see it like that 
and or like it was a translucent image so she was there but she wasn't there you know so that's how I was like what you know how to follow it yeah it's so weird um, <laughs> you know walking in that hospital and you know you would even feel like the pictures like and we used to talk about this amongst security guards you know like do you feel like that picture follows you down the hallway it feels like you know because they're the old era 1900 pictures and the founders of the hospital or whatever doctors medical um you know pat pioneers there and you could just feel like they're just like looking at you while you're walking down the hallway. And it was an eerie feeling. It was like, but you felt it. It was a real energy. And it was just like, you knew you weren't alone in that hospital. I've had things touch me. I've had experiences where I heard things, you know, you worked at the woman and children hospital. And when it was um, closed down because they transferred that uh, all of the all the old hospital went to the new hospital oh, and uh, I think it wow. was in the year of 2009 2010 and I was there during that time and I just remember that energy still being there present people still had to work in the old hospital even though everything was transferred over and so you knew the hospital was closed but you would hear things you would hear children you would hear things move on the second floor and I you know we would be like go check that out and I'd be like nope <laughs> <laughs> yeah same <laughs> No, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I had something really creepy. The first, like, no, Maria, this is real. Like, stop trying to ignore it. it was in the ho- that recently in the hospital, like two years ago though. We're going down to save the stuff from the shop for the Google gift shop, and it's late. Everything's closed. We're about to leave. It's the basement of the hospital, and we're leaving stuff mm. in there. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And then the my boss at the time, he's a pretty big guy. He used to play football. So but he was cool. And we're putting stuff away. He's in the front of the door. And I already have like a weird vibe about that room. <laughs> and he's putting stuff away. And I look and I could see between me and him a shadow go. Like, oh wow. I'm I try to get used to like don't say anything unless somebody else sees it too because unless somebody else you don't want to make it sound like you're crazy right yeah (laughs) and then and he was like very um skeptic about that so he didn't believe any of that and Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. that's what makes it even more creepy he turns around and like did you see that i'm like um what (laughs) and he's like can you define what you saw yeah (laughs) just to make sure and he's like a shadow a black shadow and it shouldn't make sense because if the light he even explained the light being in a certain place that it wouldn't make sense that the shadow passed between us and I looked at him he's like all I got in my head was like get out he's a big guy if he doesn't believe in it and he's not prepared something can happen and I just like let's go let's go let's go <laughs> forget about it <laughs> Experience. I had a lot of ER nurses, nurse friends, and uh, one was like, hey, come here. And I was like, okay, what? And I followed her listener, like, you know, naive, you know, she's like, go in that room. It was in the ER corridor. So the old ER had a U shape uh, in the in the LA County Hospital. And in this door, that's where they would put people who had passed or transpired waiting to be um, transferred. They would put them in this room, a closet. It was basically a closet. And um, this closet had like the brooms and whatnot and, you know, miscellaneous items. And that's where they would keep people until they would, you know, so nobody else would have to see that. Um, And I remember her pushing me in there and she closed the door right behind me. And I'm thinking it was cold real cold I felt a very cold like it was a different temperature from the outside going into this room it was like freezing cold and I felt like a breath on my neck and I started bounding oh my god open the door and she was laughing she was like she opens the door I didn't know what the room was used for okay so I was like very oblivious to why she put me in there she brings me out I was like why did you throw me in there She's like, do you know what that room is? I was like, no, but what is it? She's like, that's where we keep all the dead bodies. I was like, well, that fucking that makes weird. sense. Why it was very, that? exp- she weird. was messing with me. It was a scary experience, very scary experience mm. to where, you know, you felt like this, I felt like a cold chill on the back of my neck. Like someone went, Ooh. you know, on the back of my neck. I didn't like that feeling. It didn't feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I wanted the hell out of there. Let's just put it like that. 
Oh my God. So I do believe like um, energies, res residual energies mm -hmm. can stay. And I felt like in that room, there was a very much residual energy of people who passed on. And I used to have to go through the morgues, you know, so I've even had experiences, you know, uh, with having to, you know, you do security, you have to walk around the hospital and you have to, you know, you'd have to se secure just to make sure the morgue was clear too. And I've had experiences where I saw a body lift and it scared the shit out of me. But then I found out what it was, is our body still releasing gases and oh. still releasing that air. So it was a scary experience to see oh like God. a body kind of like lift a little bit. And I was like, Oh, what the, I ran, I ran, I ran, really? I ran. <laughs> I would too. I think anybody in their natural favorite would run, but you know, when you're in a morgue and you see these trans transpired bodies, you, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, not an experience everybody, you know, goes through. And I think what, what, why they chose me to work with death is to understand it. I think it was part of my path to understand life and death and, um, you know, I've had experiences where I, you know, I worked at a other hospital in uh, Ontario, California, where it was a Kaiser hospital. And, uh, you know, we had to go to the top floor and it was empty, empty, empty. We just had to make sure it was secure. And I remember going out there by myself and just walking around to make sure nobody was up there that wasn't supposed to be there. And uh, I remember trying to get on the elevator and I heard this moaning behind me. It was like, you know, it sounded like a masculine moan. So it was like, oh, you know, and I just remember not wanting to look back. I didn't, I was just like chill, you know, those, those feeling of the like goosebumps. your goosebumps up your neck. And I was just pushing the button, get the hell out of here, Alicia, get the <laughs> hell out of here. And, you know, it scared the shit out of me. So I, um, Never wanted to go up there to that floor again, to be honest. But, you know, the energy is within all around you. And if you're a light, it's just going to follow you no matter what part of the hospital, where you're at. And I just remember they use a lot of the, the machinery, you know. Um, so you would, when I was doing, you know, walk arounds, you know, to secure the area, machines would go on out of like nowhere. And I would just look at it and go, oh, hell no. And just keep walking. But now I understand it, they were using that energy to, you know, uh, turn on things and try to get my attention. You know, now I understand what it was doing at back then. I was like, this doesn't this is scary. And I just wanted to run away from it. I wanted to do the opposite. So um, I felt like it was a learning experience for me to um, have uh, have some connections with the afterlife, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you could, yeah, to, to, to understand that energy. To, to yes. That. I think that's yes. the same for me, because I never thought I would end up, I never like, I don't like hospitals. <laughs> I will Nobody avoid does. Them. <laughs> <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants to go to the hospital, just like the dentist, nobody likes yeah. the dentist. <laughs> and I just ended up like, by not by force, it felt like you got to be here. And I, mm -hmm. I worked there for like two, three years, and it's, it's I'll never forget it. <laughs> so you know that you can correspond those experiences you understand those experiences it's very yeah. it's a very it was a very awakening experience mm -hmm. for me to be honest and uh you know uh i feel like you know my mediumship abilities were even there then it's just i didn't really listen to myself then um i didn't want i wanted to acknowledge it but i, I was scared to acknowledge it too at the same time same <laughs> yeah same. exactly <laughs> um so it's it's in the same topic, but it's not. <laughs> uh, did anything happen while you? If, oh, well, I should ask. Did you ever visit Zach's museum? And if you did, like, did anything yes, I did. While you were I there? did, and you know, um, I was always, you know, mesmerized by you know paranormal and the experiences, and so for me to be scared of it, of course, we have a natural fear of the unknown and um, the unexplainable and objects and, you know, all of that, you know, uh, what well, bumps in the night kind of energy. And, um, you know, I had to work myself up going there, you know, because of the items he had there. And because I already was aware of my in, in past sensitive ways, um, I had to learn to ground myself. I had to learn in a sense to purify myself. I think like I was in training, spirit was placing me in training, like, 
uh, learning how to release energies or entities. And um, when I was finally to the terms where I was like, okay, I can do this because I know how to protect myself. I was ready. I just feel like I, I just needed to learn uh, a base and um, a ritual in a sense to, and I do these things naturally now. It's not something I just do once in a while. I do them every day to cleanse and banish energies, you know. Um, so I went and uh, was I scared? No, I wasn't afraid. I was more like what is going to talk to me and who is going to talk to me and in a sense, what do they want? So I was more coming in with like trying to help or in a sense, I was allowing myself to be a channel, but not afraid like I would have been a couple years before that when they opened or a few years before that. I think for me. I was, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was scared, but I wanted to go as a, like a final, like, this is real Maria and you do have something. And if you don't really see it, then it was like, that's me. Then it was all in your head or whatever. Or maybe it was just a, a thing that we passed in Milwaukee like years ago when I was little. Like, oh no they're very real no now and they, i know <laughs> now i get it but. yeah I, I was going through the same energy like feelings as you like is this real and you know I've, I've always watched ghost adventures since they came out and i think anybody who's in the paranormal have found themselves watching yeah. you know ghost adventures i used to sit there and watch it with my children just to to watch it you know and my kids were very you know i didn't hide that kind of stuff from my children i didn't Oh, no, don't watch that. I didn't want to program their beliefs in that way. And uh, they used to like watching it with me. So it was kind of like a family thing for us to sit in the dark and watch it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, him having a museum very close to home where I was able to just go, I still wasn't ready in the beginning. You know, I had to work my way up to it. And finally, I just did it. And uh, I'm glad I did. It was an experience. It was a learning experience and uh would i recommend anybody to go and try it if they're ready mm -hmm. <laughs> if they're ready yes yeah they have to be careful to go with her i yeah only i feel like I, I, my mom like okay let's sit down because she's she they're christian now we grew up very spiritually so she after i became after we left that milwaukee we all went very it's a whole story <laughs> she's um Evangelico, um, oh, they have a name for that. She goes to the jails and stuff, and she mm. goes for them and stuff. She, she's got okay oath to her stuff. Like missionary work. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I'm like, Mom, I'm going to do this, and I explain to her, and she's so sweet about it. And she's like, you know what? Always put God first, but if this is for you, to like for your spiritual path, go ahead, and I'll bless you, because I asked her for a blessing from me. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, she was so sweet about it, and like she knows that I, 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 I'm looking for my calling yet. So I feel like this is getting close to it. <laughs> and I asked, did you carry me, anything with you? Yes. Um Okay, she what did you carry? This about a, if I could get, I don't think you could see it too far. I'll put a, a like there. a wrote. Okay, like a it's, prayer, like a little no I don't know what it's called. Or something. It's it has um, Mary. And baby okay mother. yeah and it has um jesus something mother. symbolic of 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 uh like jesus or mary yeah. or something like and then okay yeah she prayed over us and um this is from like generational like she gave me this from great 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 grandma she was a psychic medium so they even got me more like pumped like oh my god this is a choir. <laughs> nice. and, I, and i wanted to go and i went i was scared and you know how they ask um do you want to go, especially the debit box? That's the one that. Oh, that room me. was heavy. Just oh the God. outside energy was very heavy. I felt that energy like immediately. It was Girl. not something. <laughs> I felt it like outside before we even entered that corridor. Before you enter, I was like, this energy is heavy. Um, I don't know why I couldn't go in that room. I didn't feel invited. Okay. There were certain rooms that did not invite me. And it's not that I was scared of them. I was listening to myself. Okay. I feel like in a sense, if it's something demonic or because there is demonic energies within that, that place. And there isn't, I feel like anything that if you're the light coming into the dark, of course, they're very aware of you, you know, and I just didn't feel invited. 
So I had to listen to myself, even though I wanted to experience it. I just had to listen to myself to not uh, go in there. So I could just imagine if you went in there, what kind of emotion you were feeling. Girl, I just wanted it just for me. I don't know why, but it represented it. That room represents a lot of what me and my little brother went through in Milwaukee in the night. You see, so, that's probably why I didn't go in there. <laughs> uh-huh. So I'm like, I, I have to overcome this because you're not going to mess with me anymore or my family. Like it, it was a weird like thing in my head like I have to overcome this because I know somehow this is going to be my work at the end like I right feeling so I'm like and my, my husband you were the Harry and I asked him you're coming with but you don't have to come in <laughs> but I told myself I would go through everything and he's like no you go ahead and he's very you scared. know I tried it's not that I was scared like I'm telling you I wasn't scared no, I, I was just listening to myself yeah. like he was saying don't go in there because it doesn't want you i just felt like it did was saying don't come in here get out yeah and i was just like, in a sense just... respecting its yeah. like wishes for me to be honest so uh do i wish i could have experienced it sure do i wish i could have seen the items and whatnot in there sure but i have to listen to what other energies are trying to tell me there's a reason for it why they didn't want me to come in there and i just had to listen and respect it um, I, uh, carried a rosary. I carried my son's rosary. It's right here. Oh, it's beautiful. And I'm not by all means, I do use Catholic energy within my practice with mm-hmm. saints and I, in God and whatnot, but I'm, I'm, I'm more spiritual now, but I carried this with me in, um, I carried black tourmaline. I carried my black tourmaline with me. And uh, I can't remember what else. I think that's all I really brought was for protection. And, uh, I, you know, did my meditation and, you know, called in my guides to assist me if I needed it, you know. And I feel like, you know, I was aware of it. I was grounded. I cleansed myself before coming in. And even after I cleansed myself leaving, you know, me and my fiance, we both went at the same time. Yeah, I respected my husband. He said, no, you go ahead. No, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, he came with me. He's so sweet about, like, he knew what I was going through. He's like, no, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. We'll go together. And yeah, he was, like, like protector. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I Just like that. my fiance, he's the same way. He he feels like he has to protect me in certain, certain ways because he's more grounding energy and I'm more, I'm more air. So I'm very, like, out there. And he's just, like, he pulls me down. Mm-hmm. So he... He always feels like he needs to come with me on experiences or in a sense, um, whatever I'm doing in spirituality, like, especially if it has to do with paranormal, he feels like he has to come with me. <laughs> oh, that's, that's sweet. That's cool. Um, what was I going to go for the next thing? Oh, I was going to say something. One thing I did experience there too, forgive me, was the Kevorkian room. Um, oh. Dr. Death. I had energies talk to me there. It was like, I felt very sad in that room. I felt like this really sigh of relief, but sad, you know? So it was like, I'm okay, but I'm sad at the same time. And I, I felt a couple energies channeled through me saying, I'm okay, I'm okay. And so I picked up uh, what they were, what I was channeling or whatever energies. I felt very peaceful. They, I felt peace in a sense. It wasn't like I'm, I'm stuck. They were just kind of confirming to me, I'm okay. But they were still sad. I don't know. That's just kind of what I was receiving when I went to that room. That's cool. That's good to like know that because I was curious about it. I didn't get to. I'm not that good. So I didn't really feel anything. But for some reason, I don't know. For my imagination, I was so excited to be there. I I looked at the truck thing, the little the van, mm-hmm. and there's this doll or whatever, this mannequin, mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. and I'm looking. And all of a sudden, I could see her chest go. And I'm like, right. oh, cool, they put oh, animatronics. Wow. And I asked the tour guy, and she's like, no, there's no animatronics in there. So, <laughs> I- <laughs> so you were seeing something, yeah, on the other, on the other side, yeah, <laughs> doing like, its magic. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, after I went to, I've noticed something, and I know now I'm starting to get about the ancestor stuff and the protection from your ancestors and stuff, because you know how that week, I don't know, no, you didn't go for that year, but I went in 2018, 
and there was something that he yeah went. you said you thought you saw me and I'm like no I went uh-huh. in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> we all have that that person that looks like us though <laughs> yeah I know um that time I think he he tried to open the box I know he did recently and I didn't watch the show and I wanted to right now but at that time for Halloween was it he tried to open the box and the day before they announced it I swear to god I had a dream and I think I put a video if, the, if people want to see it of me in the kitchen with my great grandma or grandma and my mom and I see the box I don't know if it was backwards and a cigar on top of it half smoked that was the day before the day after Zach announced, oh, I'm going to open the, the debit box. And I'm like, no, please don't. Because <laughs> I went there recently. And that was, that's weird that I, it was very weird. Do you, see that you feel like the scar was like in some form of protection? Yeah. I think mm-hmm. my grandma protected me. That's how I looked at it, like too, like I'm reading into it, like it was a source of protection. And uh, they were trying to avoid you, don't play with fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that the grandmother I channeled, or is that another yeah. grandmother? I think. Oh, it's, it's the same grandmother one. I channeled the other day. I think I'm not sure because I, I that grandma I never met in person. All I remember is giving her a kiss in her casket because I have a connection with her, but I never got to meet or play with her because on my dad's side, my dad's like seventy something. He's older than my mom. Is that the grandma that likes to cook and that and and <laughs> the one I was picking up moving things in the kitchen? See, I think it might be the other grandma. Oh, okay. I wish it was <laughs> yeah. my, I just, I'm not sure because I, I never grew up with my grandma on my dad's side. She's short. She's short, right? I'm getting really short energy. Maybe if you know what she looks like. No, <laughs> that's a sad part. That's okay. She's just going <laughs> to be short. <laughs> Because I, I just remember kissing her in a little casket, and my dad said, there's no way you should remember that you were too little. I know there's a connection with me and her. Oh. Do you know, we start remembering, as, I think, at the senses of four or five. I was two. My dad said, you yeah. were two years old. How yeah. do you remember that? And I'm like, I don't know. That's the last thing I remember her. The only thing. And then the other person you might be picking up, or the person you're picking up, I think, is my husband's um, grandma and they're very close to her oh okay okay i she think the one that's more like see. you know she's got a very uh yeah, like directive it. energy <laughs> directive she 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 we feel kind of back nappy in. there we go yep that's her because <laughs> i'm trying to say it in spanish listen to me listen to me <laughs> Yeah. Listen to me. Like, you know, very like, why aren't you listening to me? I told you. <laughs> yep, that's her. Wow. <laughs> oh, she meant well. She meant well. She did. She it's did. just very, she had very masculine energy. That's it. Very directive and authoritative. <laughs> yep, that's her. <laughs> she <was> cool. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you for that. Yeah, I know. You're welcome. Very, very respectful. Um, so the next question is, and we we got a little bit of time. I don't think we got, we'll make a second part if, you, if you're if willing to come on again. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. How did you start your spiritual journey is the other question. <clears throat> well, I started it young. Um, again, you know, with being, um, again, I felt like I was connected to spirit ever since I was younger. I used to feel their presence. They would touch me. I wasn't in the magic in the sense of seeing things, if that makes sense. Cause some mediums can see clairvoyantly. They could see mine's was more like sensitive energy and in knowing clear cognizance. Like, forgive me if I can't say that. No, you're right. Fine. I can't say it. Either. And um, <laughs> I just, I, I went through life, not really understanding it, but I knew something. I always knew there was energies there. Um, <clears throat> through my life, throughout my life, I've been called a bruja. And, you know, when you think of bruja, you think of the bad witch that they program people to believe. They they program people to believe that witchcraft or brujaria is bad because of what we see on TV and media. 
you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was programmed in that sense to stay away from that. And uh, when people would call me that, I would get scared. I'd be like, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? But I've had who, I think brujas no brujas. And they were like, she's a bruja, you're a bruja. And I never really uh, accepted it, if that makes sense. So on my spiritual path, I've been told this at least maybe five times in my life from different people in different times time frames and um you know in 2016 i think i went through a spiritual awakening and uh was getting all the synchronicity you know the awakenings at three o'clock in the morning and i was living in in with my fiance and his mother at the time and so i was experiencing this like i was excited about it you know but i was also in a sense, um, scared because I was starting to feel the energies and they were very present with me, followed me around every place I went. And I felt it every, you know, even though I couldn't see it, I felt it and it was very dominant. Um, they would let me know exactly they were there. It was like, I'm here and I'm, I'm with you. And I didn't know whether to correspond to evil or positive, you know, like I said, I've come across demonic energies. Um, when I had a very, uh, I was going through a divorce uh, in a sense. I was very low in vibrational energy. That's when I was working at the county hospital. I brought home attachments. In a sense, I've had a ex scary experiences with, you know, demonic energies, the growls, you know, the just the, the ugliness of that energy. And um, I knew this shit was real. I'm sorry, you cannot sit there. And, you know, when you experience something like that, you know it's real and it's scary as hell. And um, was I curious about it? Yes, but I was not that curious because I felt it was like it wanted to, I don't know if it was a possession or I was trying to really feed off my fear. And I really feel like it was just feeding off my fear because I didn't even want to go to sleep at night. Um, that I knew, I started to know that, you know, that I have experienced, I am experiencing dark and light. And then in 2016, I started to pick up more on the light energies and I started to know like, okay, this is good. This is bad. It started to give me more of a difference of angelic and demonic or just energies, you know, not all our, you know, there's, there's all kinds of energies, you know, you have spirit energies of animals and, you know, of ants as, and forgive me, astral energy from, you know, you, you get so many dimensions, you know, and, um, I started to follow it and then I I think it came too much to me where it was overbearing. I didn't know how to turn it off. Mm. So there's, you have to learn when to turn it off and I didn't know how to do that. And it was just always, always trying to get my attention. And finally I was like, leave me alone. I don't want this anymore. And it did. It left me alone because it has to respect your wishes and boundaries. And the synchronicity went away and the voices went away and the everything went away. And I was like, okay, well, I'm living a normal life now. And I wanted a normal life. And I think back in 2017, it came back and I was like, oh shit, here it is. It was giving me signs. And um, I was driving. I was actually moving from California to Las Vegas and I was doing a lot of back and forth. And it gave me a sign and I was on my way to an interview and, um, when I was driving on the freeway, my window shattered inwards in my in my car. And it scared the crap out of me. I had to stop. I was on an empty freeway, so there was no way of like another car around me. I was looking to see if kids were throwing things off the freeway. You know, I was trying to like, Assess. you know, debunk everything yeah. to make sure it wasn't just my imagination. I looked in my car. Uh, there was nothing in my car that showed significant reasons why my window, there was no rocks, there was nothing. It just, all my glass was inward at me. Um, I was going to an interview. So I was like, I called my aunt. I said, hey, can you please come check out my car? I'm going to an interview. I need, the glass is broken. It's shattered. She came in, she she checked my car. She cleaned, cleaned it and tried to find the source. And she was like, I have no idea what the hell that was. And I'm scared for you. And so it, I knew it was back. I knew something was trying to get my attention. Then I was like, okay, you're back. What do you want for me? And I just knew then this was meant for me. It was kind of going, you're not going to walk away from this. This is part of you. This is who you are. You're meant. A week later, my son passed away. Oh, wow. And I think it was trying to get my attention. I think it was like, 
look, pay attention, caution. I looked at more of that as a warning sign than more of like an attack. And um, when my son passed away, like within a week later, it dawned on me, oh my God, you were trying to warn me and I wasn't paying attention. I feel like after my son's passing, it was a very tragic experience for me. And um, it was something uh, I don't want anybody to experience being a parent. Um, it was a part of me that had to, in a sense, find myself again. And I didn't, I couldn't find that through counseling. I couldn't find it through and the aspects of, you know, I tried to go to church. I tried to go to grieving groups. I just couldn't find it. And I think I started to awaken myself through spirituality. And so I took a class here in Vegas with, it was called a spiritual awakening class. And I felt aligned with it. Okay. And I felt it could be a process of me healing. So I took it. it. It gave me so much information on the spiritual world, you know, in the aspects of cleansing and protecting and candle work and connecting with, you know, other spirits and other dimensions. It was pretty much a very fascinating class for me to, and I took it all in and, uh, I was still curious and though I was still healing, I found some comfort because then I told myself, if my son is in the afterlife, what am I afraid of? My son is there. And I had to really tell myself that my son is there. He's part of that world now. Why are you afraid? So I really had to pull up my big girl pants mm -hmm. and put both my feet in it. And I told myself, there's a reason for this. And so I embraced anything that came my way. Um, I started to do like, I started to work with these cards. These were my first cards that I worked with. In a sense, something told me to write things on the cards. I and I, I, these are just plain cards, mm. but I was in a sense, um, and these people correspond these with tarot cards, but they don't have the major arcana in it. But um, I was doing these kind of readings in a sense. I would just kind of entune myself to it. And I was practice reading for people. I joined groups online to do like medium shop, mediumship connection readings and, you know, readings for people to practice, practice, practice. And I started practicing with my family. I started practicing with my friends and things were coming into fruition or they would be like of accuracy. And I started to go, wow, you know. This isn't just, you know, my imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, I started to dive more deeper in it. And believe me, when you come across this path, there really is no classes. Like no one gives you a guidebook. It's not advertised on your billboards. It's not on the TV series. You have to be divinely guided into this. And that's what I just was, was divinely guided. Um, I started to practice more. And in a sense, I started doing this. And that's where the IG came in i when i was comfortable enough to start practicing for free i opened up the ig and said you know what i don't know where this is taking me but it's taking me somewhere and i'm gonna believe in it and that's why i came up with the cosmic divine um spiritual advisor uh, ig and it just opened me up to other people in different parts of the world even you you know i've done readings for people in the uk and India and England and it was just amazing to have that kind of contact through different elements of the world just through social media so I really fed off that and I started to grow more and then you know you just start picking up things as you go learning 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 I read a lot a lot and um, on my downtime that's what I did you know I wanted to know I wanted to know I wanted to know so my crown chakra and my third eye chakra was like open <laughs> It was like, take everything in mm -hmm. and it was overwhelming. And it was just like, I never wanted to stop. Yes, I know that feeling. So <laughs> it just kind of rolled, kept rolling after that. And this is where I am today, you know, and I even work at a metaphysical shop now. So spirit aligned me the way it was meant to happen. And I met some great people and I met you. So, you know, I just listened to myself and uh, I had to believe that you know, this spiritual path was for a reason. Spirit set me up for this path. And, you know, even through my tragedy, I had to, in a sense, and grow, believe in that bruja that I was, because a bruja is a, a very much an empowerment and strong individual. 
And I had to really like embrace that and and be that. So that mm -hmm. that is what helped me with my healing, to be honest. The healing process helped with my spiritual journey. Yes, a hundred percent. It's something you can't you can't negate because I, I God I tried. <laughs> it's just something that will pull you back no matter what. And you, you if you try to push it away from you, like this isn't me, this isn't me. You, you're gonna it, for me at least personally, it feels very dark and very sad. It's like negating yourself. I don't know how to explain it. And I get and sorry about your your sign. I didn't know that. Oh no, you know, I'm at peace with it now. He lets me know he's good. He's I've heard so many great stories with him from other spiritual readers that he's good. I get messages from him. He's happy for me. He's so happy. Like I I even did a seance with uh Patty. My first seance honestly was with Patty Negre. I was and uh, divinely guided to her too. And uh, I even got my son come through in a seance reading with her as well. And it was amazing. It was pretty amazing. Yes. And I was actually happy. I wasn't sad. It was almost like, oh my God, yeah. I can hear him. I could feel him. You know, it was a very amazing experience. Yes. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Well, since we ended with that, her, you could contact Alicia Leon on her IG and she has a website. It's uh, Karma Connection. LV. LV. Um, yes, it's Karma Connection here in Las Vegas. It's a metaphysical shop uh that is located i want to say 10 minutes from the strip if like if you're coming into vegas and uh, it's a, it's a mom and pop shop and uh, beautiful energies that work there and i've been working there for i want to say almost i'm going to say it's almost a year or two i've been there and you they could contact you through ig too if they want a reading or yes they can like contact that. me through my via cell phone um dm uh, email even the shop if they wanted to call the shop that's awesome. And then anyway, I'll link your information down below oh, if you're yay. curious. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you too. <laughs> yes. I, I plan to work with you so many more times. <laughs> likewise, likewise. I love the connection. It's beautiful. Yes. It feels divine. It feels yes. very divine. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, thank you, Alicia, and thank, thank you, you Maria, and thank you, Nick, because Nick, yes. Nick from the Haunted Diary made this happen. Yes. So, oh. <laughs> you gotta, go, gotta say thank you, Nick. <laughs> thank you, Nick. Yes, he's been such a kind person. Oh and yeah, he's, he's a great person. Together. Never met him, but you know the energy is there, and it's very, it's a mutual feeling. So, thank you, Nick. <laughs> and then Nick, I'll put his stuff down below too because it's because of him that I'm meeting all these people. <laughs> so yes, I give yeah. him lots of credit for that. And thank you guys again for coming. If you enjoyed this, like, share, subscribe so you don't miss out. I am trying to get, put out a video every week for you guys. And if it keeps flowing, I'll probably put more up. <laughs> I will advertise you and put you out there too as well. Like follow Maria. She's amazing. You don't know you're great. You're great at what you do. And I, and you know, and I know it's a calling for you. So listen to it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Like, uh, um, likewise. It's beautiful. Your, your energy. Thank you. Bye, you. Maria. Bye. Pleasure. You have a great day. We'll talk again. <laughs> Bye. 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 Love you.